seconds and counting. Ladies and gentlemen, the Houston Texans have won a game. Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. It's Anish, and yes, you heard me correctly. The Texans beat the Titans 19-14 to away, getting that Christmas Eve victory. And it's their first win since October 9th against the Jaguars. And they improve to a record of 2-12-1. And, and we have a lot to talk about. I first want to start off with the defense. Jonathan Grenard, his resurgence coming back. And he made so many plays this game. He had a huge shackle for loss on Derrick Henry. Constantly pressuring Malik Willis was amazing off the edge, as well as Ogbo Okoronkwo with two sacks and three tackles for loss. He was relentless, constant motor. I really love this free agent signing. I was super high on him when we first signed him, and I really hope that we do re-sign him this upcoming offseason. Jalen Petrie, on the other hand, he is a monster. The second half of the season, he's had a tremendous rookie campaign. He This game, he had nine tackles, one interception. And over the course of the season, he's had 126 total tackles and four interceptions, which he could have had a lot more as he dropped a few of them. And he would be a Defensive Rookie of the Year candidate if not for his tackling woes. I don't know if you all saw him getting stiff-armed by Derrick Henry, but I do love how he's been hitting hard and been more instinctive as of late. And also Christian Harris, the other rookie that deserves more recognition. He's only 21, and... He's been playing like a seasoned veteran. He has tremendous talent, and he will be a core piece on this defense for years to come. His sideline to sideline speed has been very great, and his interception versus Malik Willis was textbook, honestly. So I'm really happy for his defense. We also held Derrick Henry to about 3.5 yards per carry if you disregard that 50-yard touchdown run. And they didn't make it easy on Malik Willis at all, who... He had his moments where he escaped a lot of pressure, was really magical. Uh, as seen in the fourth quarter where he made that pass, where he got his face mask pulled originally, but he is pretty raw as seen with that Christian Harris interception. But let's go on to the offense. And before I talk about the quarterbacks, I think the offensive line does deserve some credit. They only allowed one sack on Davis Mills, and that's pretty impressive given that Tennessee's defensive line is arguably one of the best in the league. And just some shout outs to Chris Moore, who had a couple of nice grabs. And oh, just he's been very reliable these past three weeks with Cooks being out and then Nico Collins being out. He's been very consistent, as well as Philip Dorsett and Amari Rogers still providing a lot of value for this team. So we have a nice, nice depth in our wide receivers, but I still think the Texans should go. For a wide receiver in the draft and we'll get to that later but let's talk about the two quarterback system and I don't know how I feel about it I kind of like how it gives Mills a breather but the constant switching off back and forth with Mills Driscoll Mills it I feel like it gets too much at a, at a certain point but if the quarterbacks are okay with it I think that's fine but I don't like how at least in last week they had Mills in for the whole drive and then on the final place on third and goal or key situations, they put in Driscoll. And I think they did that here too on third down where they put in Driscoll and he kept the ball where he was supposed to hand it off. And that's the problem with Driscoll is when you gave him that option to make a decision, he's made the wrong choice each time where he keeps the ball when he's not supposed to and hands it off when it's better for him to actually keep the ball. So that's, that's my thoughts on Driscoll. He actually did decent from a passing standpoint. He was 3 of 4. He made nice passes, decent passes. Nothing crazy about that. But as far as Mills goes, this game was very interesting from evaluating Mills. I think at the very at the first half, at least, I think for every five bad throws Mills had, he had one good throw. And he was overthrowing guys, underthrowing guys, at least for the past two cooks. It did seem a little underthrown, but Cooks could have made a play on that. He missed time to leap. But but the second half he did pick it up. And Mills' elusiveness has gotten a lot much better. I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but he's been ducking guys, escaping pressure out of the pocket, running out. So I think he's gotten better from that aspect. He isn't like some immobile quarterback. He does have some elusiveness. And overall, I don't think in the first half, at least, he was going through his progressions very well. 
he had guys that had their hands out and they were wide open. And but however, however, that touchdown drive in the fourth quarter where he went four of four with that pass to Dorset for twenty yards, Rogers with the sideline catch for thirty seven yards, and Cooks with the spectacular catch jumping up in the end zone for a touchdown grab was by far one of the best drives Davis Mills has had put together all season. But he still wasn't careful handling the ball this game, as shown with the Texans' first touchdown, where he fumbled the ball and then Rex Burkhead somehow recovered the ball in the end zone, and then he mishandled the snap uh, at least twice, I think, uh, which caused us losing a down. And he did have an interception when targeting Cooks, and it did seem very forced. There's like about three guys in that area. Uh, but however, a good chunk of Mills' interceptions this year have been from batted up balls. So overall, I'm not sure if this performance this his performance this season allows you to bypass drafting a quarterback. And as far as first overall pick implications go, we still currently hold it with the Texans being 2 12 and 1, but the the Bears are only a 0.5 game behind us and they face the Lions and the Vikings whereas the Texans play the Jaguars who are currently first in the AFC South thanks to us, but the Texans always seem to beat them no matter what. So, no matter how bad the Texans are. And the Colts are also eliminated from playoff contention. So, they may be playing their younger guys. Some of their veterans that they signed in the offseason. So, who knows how that will go. And it also depends on how the other games will play out. If the Texans if the Texans win another game and the other teams lose, then we will end up with a second overall pick behind the Bears who aren't going to be taking a quarterback. However, there is a risk, however... As small as that may be, that a desperate team jumps the Texans to select a quarterback. I think the chances of that happening are low, as many people seem to believe that there isn't a generational quarterback in this draft class, but there is good quarterback depth in this class. So that may not happen, but if the Texans do win out, that would be pretty bad for us because the other teams in the top six, if the other teams in the top six lose out, we would risk getting the sixth overall pick and teams that could draft a quarterback in front of us would be the Colts, Lions, possibly the Lions because their offense is probably the release of their worries. Their defense is more of a question mark and Seattle. And so, so yeah, that's the earth pick implications right now. So either we win one game and then lose, I don't know what, uh, what order it would happen. Either we lose to the Jags and beat the Colts, but Oh, it would be pretty funny if the Texans did ruin their tank by winning out and the, t the other teams did lose out. So it's just something to keep in mind that all this, this whole season leading up to it, the Texans hold the first overall pick and only for them to win out and then lose and have the sixth overall pick. So, and then on, and some good news is at least the Browns also lost. So the Texans currently hold the first overall pick and the 10th overall pick. So two top 10 picks, which is really good. I don't know what, I think the Texans should definitely go for a quarterback, probably Bryce Young first overall, and then 10th overall, they should either go for either a defensive lineman prospect or a wide receiver. I think it would be good for us to go for a wide receiver because given Cook's future with this team, and I, I just think it'd, it, it would be nice to have a star wide receiver on this team. Nico Collins, as good as he's been, he's been pretty injury prone two years in. So who knows what the future is for him. And then Mechie's coming back. So it'd be nice to give the quarterback that we are drafting another star wide receiver to go with. And our defense has been pretty respectable on just overall. So there's that. And our rookies are on the defensive side are only going to get better. Stingley coming back. And... I also want to quickly touch up on the prospect that Lovey Smith does stay on this team. I know we had some videos, two videos recently, about possible head coach candidates and, Tex and Lovey Smith being on the hot seat. But with the Texans playing recently against the Cowboys and the Chiefs almost beating them, really putting them on edge, and us beating the Titans, who were previously the first in the AFC South, I don't know if that will sway Nick Casario or Cal McNair, whoever's making the decision on Lovey Smith, to end up keeping Lovey Smith. But whatever the case may be, Pep Hamilton has to go. Just the way 
Mills seem to have regressed since his rookie year. It's pretty concerning, and the way he's been calling games has been pretty atrocious. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it on my thoughts on this game, this win versus the Titans. Overall, I love the way our guys have been playing, especially as of late. They, it really does mean a lot. At least credit to Lovey Smith that the guys are playing very hard so late into the season so props to him for that but that's pretty much it for the video let us know your thoughts on this game and as always be sure to like subscribe and turn on post notifications thank you all for watching peace